Hello everyone, this is Ross at Teacher Talk at the most influential blog on education in the UK. Today I am super excited because I'm joined by Jim Knight and Chanel Fusco. Uh, Jim, uh, some of you will know who works in education, appear in the House of Lords. I'll ask Jim to introduce himself in a moment. And Chanel, who is the sales director at Picatel, a brilliant app, a free app that offers loads of reading books for parents and teachers. Um, can I ping over to you, Jim? Could you just introduce yourself, your role, uh, and the things that you're up to day to day, if that's possible. Of course. Thanks, Ross. Um, so Jim Knight, a.k.a. Lord Knight of Weymouth, um, a one-time MP and schools minister, you know, eons ago, um, and since then been working mostly commercially in education with TES, which is where I got to know Chanel. Uh, mm -hmm. But um, in my post TES world, um, back doing a little bit in Parliament, but also uh, I'm a non-exec director of three companies. I advise North Anglia. I chair the EACT multi-academy uh, mm -hmm. train and um, yeah, I advise one or two others along the way around schools, teachers, education, technology. There you go. Uh, many, many different hats. Um, and Chanel, how about you, your role in Picatel and, and give us a synopsis of what Picatel is. Yeah, so I'm the UK sales director at Picatel. Um, you know, we're a global organisation. We're founded from um, Norway originally. And it's a platform essentially that helps kids to become better readers. Mm -hmm. So we're helping teachers um, access hundreds and hundreds of resources um, that truly engage kids in the reading journey. Um, like Jim said, um, we met at TES. So I was the general manager for the UK Western Wales there, um, doing recruitment and selling other SaaS solutions into schools. Yeah, and I guess between the three of us, you know, all that online analytical behaviour about what teachers click and times of year and seasons and what works, I guess between us, we've got quite a lot of bit of data in our head stored about analytics and uh, what works from a test or a teacher toolkit perspective. Um, it's really interesting. So we'll come back to Picatel, but Jim, can I just pop over to you? Um, before we go into the details of Picatel, if we just take the theme of literacy, could I ask you two questions? One, general, the general state of the nation in terms of literacy, pupils or adults, and then what has happened as a result of the pandemic? Uh, thanks. And um, some of this will be my impression as much as what I can mm -hmm. pull off the data from, you know, up my sleeve somewhere yeah um, <laughs> but um uh, but you know it's informed by the work on the literacy or party parliamentary group as well as you know the various things i talked about um my sense is and, and we saw this dramatically in covid that the disadvantage gap really comes to play and uh we see disproportionate numbers of of young people and adults from disadvantaged backgrounds who struggle with their reading. Mm. Um, and uh, it's still a problem. I don't know the exact numbers, but it's still a problem for a significant number of mm. children, young people and adults. And we have a lot to do across all three of those sectors. You know, the, the uh, I, I think the literacy hour and then, um, and then, you know, one of the things that, Nick Gibb in his very long tenure did was champion the use of synthetic phonics. I think it was a little bit of one club golfing, but nevertheless, I think it, it, it has made a difference to have a more mm -hmm. systematic way of teaching reading. Those things have made a difference to children in the earlier years. Um, but I think we've still got quite a long way to go in terms of the catch up for young adults and, and young people who don't make it with confident reading um, in mm -hmm. primary. A lot of that will be associated with their parents struggling to read with them at home because they themselves have reading problems. And I think we're quite a long way from being able to make a tangible difference around mm -hmm. those adults that, I mean, they feel really self-conscious and ashamed, if you like, if, if they, they know that they're struggling with their reading and they won't really mm -hmm. admit it. And it's very difficult to engage them and get them to, first of all, front up that they've got a problem because it's mm -hmm. only when you front it up that you then seek the help. Yeah, I was looking at the mm -hmm. stats on the Literacy, National Literacy Trust. I think 18 million, 
uh, our, our numeracy is 18 million adults. Uh, the new, uh, the literacy, um, just a quick check on the literacy uh, trust organisation, 7.1 million adults in England alone yeah. uh, and, and approximately one and a half across the other UK nations. Um, and, and of course, Ross, you know, however brilliant podcasts like this one may be, mm -hmm. uh, reading is just the most essential skill mm -hmm. to be able to access learning. And we know, especially with the dynamic nature of, of the labour market and people being de-skilled in their jobs and so on and so forth, that we've got to keep learning. And mm -hmm. uh, so not only does that disadvantage children if they're struggling with their reading in terms of their other learning, but it will disadvantage them for the rest of their lives. And mm -hmm. uh, so it's of, of fundamental importance because, uh, you know, if you looked at it, really crudely as an economic problem the nation can't afford to look after all those people who can't look after themselves because they can't yeah. really access work because they can't read yeah yeah uh, I, I, I was reading the little leveling up uh, paper published by policy exchange just before christmas about trying to tackle you know that postcode lottery i suppose and, and literacy featured in there sorry chanel i, I interrupted you no i was going to just uh, present a little bit of a stat really that i came across the other day um at three years old for the disadvantaged segment you know they're hearing 30 million less words than kids from um you know more well-to-do sort of background and the, the kids that are actually being supported with their reading um day-to-day -day at the epic one of our competitors um mm. reported this stat they're reading on average 41.3 books a year whereas disadvantaged kids are reading about 13 yeah so that's a massive gap and when jim talks about closing this gap it's as educators what can we do um mm. to fully support these children and it's about you know getting them to access their own favourite books, you know, giving them the um, agency and autonomy to be able to explore non-fiction titles that they're interested in, um, have content that's around solving mysteries, you know, just making mm -hmm. it more engaging. For I'm reminded of a podcast I had with Dylan William uh, about a year ago, and he said, um, brilliant, it kind of worked out that the average adult is likely to read about 4,000 books in their lifetime. Oh. So if you take those 4,000 books, what books are you going to read is quite an important question. Yeah. Uh, and then if we go to our, our kind of life in schools, the selection of books uh, that we might deliver to our pupils, in some cases where parents can't, would be quite yeah. an important decision. Um, well, I think Jim, one, sorry, more question, sorry, uh, oh, sorry. one more question, Jim, in terms of the, the insights you see at the House of Lords, what kind of things are being discussed under the umbrella of literacy at the moment. Is there anything you can tell us? Um, well, I, I guess the honest answer is um, there's nothing that comes instantly to mind. The, you know, the, there's an obvious preoccupation at the moment with um, managing our way through COVID, you know, putting aside who's having parties where. And the fundamental issues around child development that has been stunted by uh, for, for some children but no means all children I think teachers and learners have been heroic in the way that they've adapted during the last two years yeah. but there's no doubt that for the more disadvantaged pupils they're more likely to mm -hmm. then have suffered in terms of their child development now at the very early years that's some basic um, child development uh, uh, around social skills uh, you know kids coming into uh, reception still wearing nappies mm -hmm. um, all the way through to the beginnings of being literate mm -hmm. and that's something that there is conversation about here uh, about you know we're nervous about what we're supposed to call it you know because <laughs> yeah. you know, mm -hmm. we know that people don't like catch up and they don't like mm -hmm. some of those other phrases but there is a developmental loss that people are really concerned about, particularly as it's hitting the most disadvantaged. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and Chanel, can you give us a, a flavour of what Picatel is and how it might help, uh, I guess, in particular, the, the conversation we're having uh, our disadvantaged pupils, perhaps? Yeah, so Picatel is a reading platform for kids between the ages of four and 11. Um, it's enriched with content that's non-fiction, fiction-led titles as well. It's all, the, the, the books on there are audio narrated. Um, we cover non-curriculum um, led um, topics as well that really help to engage and um, help teachers to align their topics of, com of, of um, their, their topics of literature 
to these types of topics of books that we're creating. We own our own pub publishing arm, so we're able to give um, rich content into schools, these resources completely for free, um, and you can use it on a um, um, on any app, so Android mm -hmm. app, iOS app as well, and then the teacher gets a dashboard whereby they're enabled to set children homework so that they can independently read from home as well. What we're trying and to what's do the, really the, the, the database of number of books that you've got that are freely available for parents and teachers to use? So at the moment we've got eight hundred um, oh, free wow. books that are leveled um, from level one to level eight, and they follow the Lexile leveling system. Um, and it's really, really easy to use. It, it, it focuses on the child's age and then it makes it appropriate for that child's um, you know, reading experience and level. So the parent's able to get involved in the journey from home, but equally the, the teacher's able to really take control of that and support that as well. And the, the thing that I hear from schools the most on my travels is that actually being able to see what the child has read without having to wait for the parent to complete um, the book at the end of the day, of the evening to, to evidence that the child has read has actually saved them so much time. Mm -hmm. so um, a great win for, uh, for parents too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, and they're able to, you know, have conversation with kids the next day and say, I've seen that you've read the Sustainable Development Goals 1 on poverty. Mm -hmm. What did that mean to you? Now, I, I, I'll tell you an interesting story. It might be with the, the friends I keep, but, um, you know, I, I've got one <laughs> or two friends that are, you know, well to do, you know, good intentions with their children at school. But I'm really shocked when I say, do you read to your kids? And they tell me no. I, I find that yeah. fa fascinating and quite shocking. And if this is people who are, you know, got a roof over their head, so to speak, mm -hmm. then, you know, going back to that disadvantaged context, yeah. if you haven't got your food and water, then you've got no chance of uh, ever picking up a book. Um, and, and, and Ross, that's one of the things I love about Picatel. You know, as a, a parent, and I'm a, I'm a retread now with a 10-year-old um, a stepdaughter, and, um, <laughs> you know, and I still read to her. We've, we've just been reading um, The Boy Called Christmas together. Nice. Um, she'll read a bit and I'll read a bit. And, you know, and it, it's just a lovely way to end their day. It's a lovely part yeah. of my evening. Yeah. And that's always been the case. And the, what I love about Picatel is for those parents who are not confident readers themselves, they can they can participate because the the stress around I'm not confident myself about what what this book is saying is taken away because yeah. the book will read to them if that's what mm -hmm. the user wants. Um, which which is just beautifully inclusive in a way that I don't know anything else does. Yeah, yeah I guess that it has that it has that phonetically karaoke style text, doesn't it, Chanel? I think. Yeah, you can either slow it down or speed it up. You know, it's great for um, children. Great for adults English. who struggle with reading too, I suspect. It is, yeah. And where where we're finding that actually once the child is bringing that home, especially kids from an EAL background, it's actually supporting the wider family as well. Mm -hmm. So it's having much greater impact mm -hmm. than we actually thought it would do. Um, so, yeah, it's a great feature. And also, you know, if the child wants to independently read, they can turn that feature off. But at any point, if they're struggling on a particular word, they can click it and it sounds it mm. out for them. That's another powerful feature. Thank you. Uh, Jim, Jim, can I ask what your role is at Picatel? You know, why you're on an advisory board? I suspect the answers are literacy and all those. <laughs> but uh, c can we unpick uh, your kind of role um, working alongside Picatel? Uh, of course. So I'm, um, as you suggested in your question um my role is as a member of the advisory board at, at picatel which chanel's just put together uh, and that's um and both ambassadorial you know going out and talking on picatel's behalf normally as a double act, act with chanel um and uh and then also providing some advice particularly i think you know because of my work with eact my work with nord anglia um I'm trying to get yes, as close yeah. to schools and, and teachers as I can, just making sure that as the product and, uh, and Picatail develops, it's still squarely there as something that the users of the product, who aren't necessarily the decision makers who choose to um, adopt the product, but mm -hmm. that the users are, are, are really having their needs met and the problems that they have being solved. Um, and so I'm and, and I, reason, I guess under that edtech, 
the reason for yeah. doing it, Ross, is I love the product. You know, there, I've got yeah. lots of people who want me to work with them, and I'll, I'll go with it if I think that they've got a great I'm sure time. you do. And, uh, you know, <laughs> your insights with EdTech and stuff, and we'll know that um, we need particularly EdTech products to be very uh, workable for teachers in terms of reducing mm -hmm. workload. Chanel, can I put you on the spot? How does your software make the life of a teacher easier? Um, it's really easier to get a view of the whole class and their reading time spent um, as an individual, on an individual level, also as a cohort level as well. And I mentioned earlier, you know, tracking the parental engagement there is, is quite difficult. Yeah, they just get it at the click of a button. You know, assigning a book is so much easier. I mean, there's one in five primary schools, the NLT has reported, that don't even have a library. So the fact that they've got 800 titles at the fingers of their tips and they can just flick through and say, okay, that's for a five-year-old, I'll set that. That's yeah, that's, I mean, it's quite a shock in that uh, library stat, isn't it? And plus libraries mm -hmm. in our communities. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Jim. Yeah, yeah and another feature that I really like uh, is a, a teacher can ask the whole class to read a single title, but it will differentiate according to the reading ability. And so you'll have mm -hmm. more vocabulary for the more advanced readers in a class. So it's inclusive in that everybody is mm. reading the same title um, and seeing the same images. And yet it's still able to adapt according to the reading ability of the kids uh, in the and class. And I guess that online uh, kind of technology allows the teacher to track you know, their engagement, how far they're reading, yeah. whereas on a physical book, you don't have that data, so to speak, unless you all read. Uh, you know, my memories from school, we all read the same passage together, et cetera. Yeah. Um, Jim, yeah. how do you feel that Picatel can make a big difference? Um, you know, in your advisor role, you know, looking at their software today, how do you see your expertise developing it, taking it further? Um, and, and Chanel, just before I ask Jim that question, how many people are using Picatel at the moment? schools um, or people yeah we've got thirty four thousand active users so pupils that are engaging right. um and reading the books so the jim uh, yeah. so how do we get um you know let's let's go let's go big how do we get 17 million adults uh, <laughs> yeah. <accessible reading? laughs> well uh, Worth saying, thirty-four thousand from a standing start six months ago. So you know yeah. that's yeah. that's pretty impressive. Incredible. and It shows how compelling the product is. Um, but yeah. Obviously, the size of what we're chasing after, because we're not just England based, we're not just UK based, you know, it's, it's a, a global business, yeah. is massive. And um, I think, yeah, part of it is just awareness. You know, as you said, it's a, a free product for schools with all of the Pickerdale content. There are, there's other content as well, which some children find really engaging because it's content like Marvel and Disney and some of that. So they can, mm -hmm. uh, you know, all that stuff that they might be consuming on Disney Plus, they can then also read about. Um, mm -hmm. Now that, that comes at a cost and some parents are choosing to pay for that. And, you know, some of that can add some engagement. Um, and the more of those sorts of titles that we can get in, um, I think there's something really interesting then about about taking books to where people are rather than dragging people to books. And, yeah. and that's the yeah. core of what the Well, I was, was going to ask the question, you know, I was going to ask the question personally, you know, we've all grown up where we like, we have to hold a book. Um, you know, with, with digital technology all around us, what what's your preference today, Jim? Are, are you a bit of a mixed blended approach with your digital <laughs> devices, or do you like picking up a book? I am blended. You know, if I the last book I finished was where the Crow Dads uh, sing. Was it physical or digital? And that was physical, um, but digitally, um, when I'm on when I'm commuting into Parliament on the train, I'm reading Tim Brighouse and Mick Waters' new book about schooling yeah, right. on on a Kindle app on my phone of all things. Um, on my Kindle at home, I am reading um, Middle March by George Eliot because I thought I should go back to a classic. Um, right, but nice. also by my bedside, which I pick up occasionally, is Chris Packham's book um, about um, the environment and COVID and uh, getting closer yeah. to nature. So, How about you, and, and that's a physical book. <laughs> I, I do love a, a physical book. Um, so right now I'm reading the uh, monk who, who sold his Ferrari. 
Um, and I'm really enjoying that and I'm enjoying you know turning the page um but I am actually an audiobook listener so I was going to ask the question if you listen to a book is that reading or or listening reading or or what's the word for you're still reading but you're listening to it (laughs) I don't know what the word is but I'm enjoying it you know so I I tap into all my um, TED talks and things like that I prefer to to really listen to that when when I'm driving as opposed to watching it as a video or something like that I suppose that auditory process is still developing your literacy uh, yeah. under the um, you know the umbrella of speaking listening writing reading etc yeah. um I, if i answer the question um i'm reading uh, inventing ourselves by sarah jane blackmore uh, the teenage brain uh, sci- uh, scientist um and i've got this to hand this is my doctoral troubles looking at social media research <laughs> methods that's a big one so that's my physical one because i have to <laughs> reference it and then uh I'm trying to tackle Penny Mordaunt's new book on uh, post Brexit. Um, you might good. have seen that was published just before, uh, just before oh, Christmas. And, Do you and I, should, sleep? I should say the other the other <laughs> yeah. physical books that I've been reading. I've been reading with Coco, my stepdaughter. So um, when she finishes the latest Percy Jackson, I will pick that up and rattle through that in a day or two, um, just so that we're we're reading some of the same things and we can talk about yeah. what she's reading. So, uh, Jim, let me ask you, you know, go, let's go back to the hard questions. What What are your recommendations for people watching this in terms of, that, you know, raising the profile of reading with disadvantaged communities, parents, pupils? You know, Chanel made that stat about some schools don't have libraries, etc. Yeah. Um, Jim, any, any recommendations? Well, look, I think make it as easy as possible for people to read is a sort of really good starting point and you know Picatel is part of that and libraries are another part of that uh, and it might be that libraries become places where you borrow devices as much as borrow books so that you yeah. can then access some of these things mm-hmm. um, but then think about yeah you can make a logical case for reading you know this is really important to your future etc etc et, et et but I think what we start to understand about behavior change is you've also got to make a case that's emotional and what's the what's the emotional reason for mm-hmm. uh, for reading? And that's why I go back to that beautiful moment in a day when you're reading together as a parent mm-hmm. with children. Yeah. Um, and it, it can be equally a beautiful moment in school where you have reading volunteers or uh, yeah, the reading assistant. corner on the carpet, cross yeah, the legs, exactly. and they but, reading the story. There's a sort of there's a just a beautiful intimacy in a highly appropriate way, but an intimacy about getting lost in a world that a book can take you to together mm. that um, I would just want to sell to everyone as something, yeah. you know, it's there for you every day. Um, mm-hmm. Go there. And and Chanel, uh, back to you, you know, that one in five stat. So, uh, you know, your insights or, you know, you're getting into schools occasionally, um, you, you, you see great libraries, you see people interested in the product. Any recommendations for those schools that are struggling to, to develop a, a database of books? You know, the, you've got the Picatel app, but what, what kind of things have you seen online as well as physically? Yeah, I've seen a lot. There's a big movement, actually, um, just from people on Twitter that are actually just collecting books being donated books to go and give into schools and stuff. I think they're really good initiatives. They're strong. They're promotional as well. But I just think, you know, we've got an issue around this devices, access to devices as well. Um, still don't know the full numbers across the UK schools in England. I'd love that mm-hmm. data. Um, but I think, you know, giving children the option to explore different stuff in the way that they want to. So even just reading Chris, um, Chris Packet, the back of a Chris Packet, um, you know, anything like that, it's still some form of reading, mm. uh, being creative. Uh, and, and, and Jim, you might know, I'm, I live in West Yorkshire now. I've, I left London <laughs> in the pandemic. So um, I, I find myself in, in deep in the valley occasionally where there is no phone signal. And <laughs> I'm reminded of a step that uh, Chanel said, you know, I can't tweet uh, down in the valley, but um, about 8% of our... Uh, the UK is still not connected to a broadband connection, yeah. I believe. Is that yeah. right? That's true. Yeah. Um, that will be about right. And uh, uh, I'm also reminded of a great phrase by E.D. Hirsch. So he, 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 you, know, you know, you know the term cultural capital. He, he's synonymous with cultural literacy, and and I, uh, uh, Nick Gibb was a big fan of his. But when I had a conversation with him a couple of years ago, he he said this phrase I've never forgotten: "Make your classroom a speech community." And going back mm-hmm. to that emotional strand, Jim. Um, 
you know, we can't leave oracy, you know, literacy to chance. It's something that you need to teach your children at home yeah. as well as in class. Uh, so I, I guess one question, uh, what's your favourite word at the moment? My, my new word is Oof. diaphanous. I love it. Uh, and it's because I've got into gardening since I've moved to Yorkshire mm. and uh, it's all about delicate and light and things like that. So diaphanous is my favourite word. Jim, you got a favourite word? Um, <laughs> I've always loved discombobulate. Oh, um, wow. Discombobulate, yeah, I like that word. It's a good um, word. Um, I think I might pass on this one. I have, I have to really think about it. <laughs> I'll come back to you now. So I'm going to wrap yeah. things up. So now, just before we, we, we do, could you just give us the link to the Picatel? Uh, app that you want our listeners and viewers to to go to yeah so it's a uh, pick a tail so p-i-c-k-a-t-a-l-e um dot co dot uk mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it's really really simple so we'll put that in all the links um so yeah. just to conclude I, I kind of throw loads of quick fire questions to you both um to kind of catch you off guard a bit like timmy's mallet see if i can get <laughs> you to pause or hesitate so jim you'll have a lot of answers to this question what project <laughs> are you working on today uh, today, um, I'm in the House of Lords voting on the Police Crime and Sentencing Bill and voting mostly against it. Um, I am also working on, I've got a Nord Anglia Advisory Board meeting. Um, I'll be doing some work on EACT um, and I'm sure there'll be some other projects along the way that I'll get there involved you go. in. Th uh, thank you. Chanel, how about you? Um, I'm actually working with Siddiqui Education at the moment and we're doing a national campaign called Books on the Box and um, we're using five of the Pigtail Sustainable Development Goals titles and kids and will be creating... Siddiqui on Gogglebox, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, there um, you go. Um, so kids will great. be creating a three-minute video trailer of their interpretation of the book and they nice. come in an iPad. So it's, it's going to be such a good campaign to get them involved. Jim, what's the book? For me, it was Sophie's World that really got me engaged with reading as a teenager. What book was it for you? I, I would go with um, Zola's uh, Germinal. Germinal Chanel. As a teenager, I'll be honest, I didn't read a lot. Right, I started Ooh. my. I know, I know. Ooh, I, um, pick it, well, there's a ticket out for you. Actually, uh, what about a magazine? No, 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 magazine, no, no, actually, no, no, no. Um, it has to be the Cat in the Hat box set series. Oh, I do remember go. my dad used to read that to me every single day. So it's the Poodles Eating Noodles was my favourite. Okay, nice. Uh, <laughs> top, top tip for parents to engage their children with reading? Read to them every day. Yeah. Okay, Chanel? I absolutely concur with that you know just even if it's for a couple of minutes it, it just read something anything okay and my last question Jim what's the book you've never read that you want to so it might be one of those epic you know doomsday books or whatever it would be which one have you never had time to are you saving for retirement <laughs> crikey um I guess I've always been too daunted to get into any James Joyce too right, slow okay. and potentially boring and i ought to have the patience to give it a proper go <laughs> right well there you go chanel how about you well i've just got back into my fitness and like mindset and everything so there's a book by david goggins um it's mm -hmm. it can't hurt some it can't hurt me or something like that and i really really want to sit down but be in the right frame of mind to absorb the content sure. yeah <laughs> uh, I, uh, you know, obviously of West Yorkshire now, so uh, the Bron I'm in the Bronte uh, land, uh, having read Jane Eyre for my A-level English literacy, uh, watched the film again just before Christmas. I need to pick the book up again, so that yeah. will be my answer. Um, right, I'm going to let you both go. Jim, you're super busy, uh, juggling lots of different things. Chanel, thank you for all your insights and oh, your free you. reading at Picatel. For free for parents and uh, schools, so please... Download Picatel, everyone, and uh, I hope you enjoy using the software. Thank you both for your time. Thanks, Thanks Ross. Always great to see you. Take care. Have a bye. good day. Bye for now. You bye. Bye. bye.